Hi, Thomas Campbell, Master Club Fitter at Second Swing. We're here today at the Minneapolis Tour Van. I've got a special guest today, uh, Mr. Steve Edel, fellow employee at Second Swing. How you doing, Steve? Good, Thomas. Good to see you. Doing good. So we're going to test today the uh, Cobra T-Rail new irons and also the Cleveland HB Turbo irons. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to, you know, maybe hit three or four shots with each club, the pitching wedge, seven iron, and four hybrid, and compare the data between these two kind of game improvement irons. Okay, so Steve, tell me about your game. What clubs do you currently play? Um, at what where do you make that transition to maybe playing a hybrid over playing a, a traditional four iron? Sure. Yeah, a number of years ago, I'll say three, four years ago, I decided maybe it's time to switch to graphite in my irons. So uh, I currently have a set of uh, irons from 14, uh, graphite, a stiff shaft, I think about 65 gram. It's a cast club, progressive cavity, so pretty forgiving. And uh, yeah, I like them. So um, I'm always looking for uh, clubs that are forgiving. And uh, as I understand, these are the kind of clubs that deliver real high on that. Yeah, both these clubs are very forgiving clubs, game improvement clubs. Um, we're both going to be testing graphite shafts today. So both these shafts are regular. Um, with the HB Turbo, we have the Miyazaki. Um, it weighs around about 60 grams. And then with the T-Rail, we have, you know, it's a 55 gram shaft specifically made by, um, by Cobra as well. So they're going to be very comparable in you know, in weight, maybe slightly more flex than what you you maybe typically play, um, but it's gonna be a good test today. Okay, Steve, let's uh, hit some different shots with uh, the pitching wedge, seven iron, and four iron with both the T-Rail and the Cleveland HP Turbo. Okay. We got the pitching wedge, Cleveland HP Turbo first. Okay. So we're gonna hit three or four shots with each one. Okay, sounds good. Very nice. How far would you say you would normally hit your current pitching wedge? Uh, 115, 120 tops. Okay. Well, those first two ran about 120 yards. Okay. 122 and 120, so pretty consistent, which is what we want to see with your scoring clubs. Yep. Give me one more with that club, please. Very nice. Okay, let's switch over here to the new Colbert T-Rail pitching wedge and we'll hit four shots with that club. Everyone sounded just a little bit different to that first club. Did you notice a difference in feel? I or did. Looks? Yep. Both sound and feel. Yes, I did. Yep. Very nice. How would you compare both these two clubs so far? Is it one that you maybe pierce the eye a little bit nicer so far, or? The feel, the sound of the Cleveland product, I had a little bit so far. You know, maybe give me a few more shots with this, but so far based on what I've done, the Cleveland product felt and sounded a little bit better. Okay. And give me one more shot with the pitching wedge. I noticed the uh, Cleveland pitching wedge is also just going just a little bit further. It looks like it's going about three, yeah. three or four yards further over on average. Yep, I noticed that as well.
I know a couple of those were slight mishits. Yeah. But I only, I think I only saw one really solid one with the, with the um, T rail versus you maybe had three solid shots there with the yeah. HP Turbo. Okay, let's switch over to uh, seven iron now. Okay. Sound just a little bit heavier. How's that? Yeah. That Interesting. One still did okay. Yeah, that one still did pretty well. I noticed it right away that your bull speed kind of dropped, but it still stayed in the air pretty pretty well. I mean, still yes. carried 147 going with 58. So that's yeah. Kind of the forgiveness you get out of these, you know, slight more game improvement irons. Very true. Yep. Very true. Very nice. Good, solid swing yeah. there. Yeah, there we go. I right, believe that was either three or four with that club. Let's switch back to the Cobra T-Rail 7 iron now and check out the distances between those. There we go. Seven. And you mentioned set to me earlier seven irons usually around about 150 150 155 150 155 okay. uh carry um land 155 160 some or okay. total you know. sounds good Left the face a little bit open on that one. Yep. Yep. <laughs> and yep. it shows. A little bit more spin, a little bit out to the right, a yeah. little bit higher. Yeah. I'm wondering. Sorry, we'll, we'll be nice here. We'll probably take out a couple of your miss hits here at the end when we yeah. take a look yeah. at all the yep. data and dispersion. That one sound like you hit that pretty solid. That was solid. probably of, yeah. of the ones I've hit so far with this club, yeah. the best. Got your bull speed over 110 miles an hour yeah. on that one. Yeah. That was hit nice and solid. Yep. Flew nice and high, going to give you a little higher degrees. landing angle so the bull can stop on the green yeah. a little faster. Sound pretty solid too. That was, yeah. We got it here, yeah. Should be close 50, to 55. where I'm trying to get it to. Very nice. Okay, so we're going to okay. switch over and hit uh, a couple of kind of the more kind of hybrid type four irons. Okay. With your current set, do you play, what, what was your transition the highest to a hybrid? iron I have in my set is a five. Is a five? So, so this I is kind of a good transition point to kind of playing that four hybrid yep. or, yep. Okay, so let's switch over here. Let's hit the HP Turbo hybrid here first. Okay, this is the four. Okay. Yeah, it's very important for us to make sure that we, uh, um, play is something that's going to maybe be a little bit more forgiving, a little easier to get that ball up in the air so it can land soft on, on the green for us. Yeah, let's uh, switch this to... That is why I have it in my bag. That was pretty nice there. That right, two hundred. Carry about one eighty on two hundred. As long as I didn't have to carry it one eighty five. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the advantage you get with a hybrid. I know you didn't quite catch that perfect, but it still right. flew nice and straight. It still kind of kind of went. I'm yep. I'm going to be a lot closer to my target with a club like this on a miss hit 
than I would with a comparable four iron. No ifs, yep. ands, or buts. Yep. With my uh, less than consistent swing. As I say, with my less than consistent swing. That's okay. <laughs> we're, all, we're only human. We're going to oh have God. that occasion, occasional miss it. Oh, man. Oh, man, is that true. Now, Steve, when you play, what would you say you would typically shoot for 18 holes? I'm right around 80. Right about 80? Okay. Yeah. Yep. Give or take. Would you say you have a pretty strong short game? I have to. Keep to. You, you have to. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because yeah. uh, my, uh, my fairways and regulation, um, or just hit fairways, I, I can stray off the path. So okay. I, I got to get back in the game with a short game that... You know, works more often than not. That sounded good. Nice. There's your carry over 180. Because that's kind of a conversation we have a lot of the times. A lot of people ask, you know, what, what you know, what, what should, what club should I play? Well, you should really consider how strong your short game is versus how strong your ball striking is. So some people, their short game is very good, so they still might need a more game improvement iron. Yeah. Some people, their short game ain't so solid, but they're good bull strikers, so that's why they can get away with a little bit more of a kind of a yeah. player's blade, per se. Yeah. No, no I have uh, I just fallen off on my proximity. <laughs> Not sure why, it just is what it is. That felt pretty good. Yeah, good ball oh, speed. Pushed it a little bit though. Yeah, maybe pushed it just a little bit. Like I say, that's that's not unusual for me. Okay. All right, let's hit four more with the Cobra T rail, and then we'll take a look at numbers here and see how they will compare. Okay. Just another slight miss hit. Oh yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. Welcome to the club. Well, you got to keep in mind it's end of October here in Minnesota. I'm sure you <laughs> probably haven't had a chance to play a lot of golf in the last couple of weeks. That's this is true. Yeah. This is true, but I have. Uh, Give me a couple more with that club. Okay. A little bit lower on the face. Oh. Now, but these two hybrid looking four, four iron, four hybrids, they, you know, they do, do have a distinct look between the two of them. Yes. Does one present more confidence to you looking down at it I at all? I like the looks of, this is more, as I call it, a comparable looking hybrid shape to a lot of other hybrids, whether you're at the high end title list or anywhere in between. Yep. That's a unique shape, which I think a person would have to look at and go, if it performs well, I can like the looks of it. Yep. But as far as shape, and looks, May kind of like the T-rail just a little I, bit. I looking, really do. Down yeah, okay. yeah. It looks more like what I'm currently using. So. Yep. A little bit open on the club face yeah, on that one. Yeah, for some reason, I don't know what I'm hitting these as far right as I am, but I'll get one more, see if I can yep. straighten it out. Let's hit a couple more of this one just to... Yeah. See if we can get a couple good shots in with this yeah. club. Let's see here. Maybe reposition. Reposition. Sound a little more solid. That's, a little more bull speed. Yeah. Getting it back toward the center line. Yeah. Little things like ball position, all these kinds of things. <laughs> That 
that was pretty. There we good. go. That was pretty good. That was that was it solid. Yeah. Okay. There I made some adjustments in my stance and ball position, and <laughs> we always react to the data all the time, don't we? It's yeah. <laughs> it is. All right. Well, let's so. take a look at some numbers here and see how everything compares. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up a couple of different screens here. Show all. And then let's just kind of dice, get, take out a couple of the misses with a few of these clubs, see how everybody's looking. So that one we know is a little of a miss hit. I'm definitely liking how that arm circle is looking with the hybrid for sure. Yeah. yeah. So I know you talked about, you know, looks, you know, even though it didn't maybe look if it's appealing to the eye to you, it definitely well, did go a little bit further. Yeah. Than I mean, was, I'm the type of player who, if you put a club in my hand and it performs better for me, I'll find a way to like the looks of it. Yeah, you know. Yeah, we'll, we'll get used to it. Look. Yeah, we'll I can. Like I, this I, look yeah, of it. I can. I can. I can. I struggle enough that I'm not going <laughs> to let a uh, a visual prevent me from putting a better club in my bag. So, Steve, let's take a look at the data. Uh, first thing I like to look at is I definitely like to look at the dispersion pattern. So I like to see which one of those circles are kind of nice and tight, nice, no, nice small circle. I also like to see, you know which circle maybe is going kind of a little bit further. Mm -hmm. So you will notice if we take a look at, for example, the white circle versus the yellow circle here, you'll notice that is the Cleveland HB Turbo. It was consistently maybe going a little bit further than the Culprit T-Rail was. Mm -hmm. Both of those lofted were, you know, loft of 44 degrees, so I wasn't expecting too much of a difference, but you did notice that it was maybe going just a little bit further mm -hmm. and maybe a little more consistent as well. Right. So that was kind of your best three or four shots that you hit. If we move up a little bit further, we look at you know the seven irons. So we've got the um, purple and blue circles that we're kind of comparing. If we look here, that purple circle maybe just going just a little bit further than the blue circle, and also was maybe just kind of a little bit a little bit tighter as well. Mm -hmm. um, that was the Cleveland HP Turbo with the blue, with the purple circle, Cobra T Rail with the blue circle. Mm -hmm. Now the one. Thing I really do notice the difference with was consistency with the hybrids, four, yeah. the four hybrid. I know you kind of talked about maybe not so much kind of liking the look of the HP Turbo as much, but it's pretty obvious you know, it's going a little bit further and mm -hmm. also a little bit more consistent. Right. You know, right hovering right around the 200 yard mark total mm -hmm. distance. Mm -hmm. T rail was maybe just kind of a little, little bit shorter there. Now I got you to hit four or five shots. I mm -hmm. took a couple out, so maybe I can maybe take you know one more out, but even still, still. If you notice. You know, we hit we hit six shots with that one. Didn't quite perform quite quite as well. Yep. Um, let's see if there's anything that we can notice that reason why these we got these distance gains. Um, so if you look at the pitching wedge, you'll notice for some reason you were swinging that Cleveland HB Turbo faster, quite faster than mm -hmm. you were swinging mm -hmm. the um, yeah. T Rail. Ball speed's higher. Yeah, ball speed was higher. But what's interesting is your smash factor actually was a little bit lower with the HB Turbo. Now. That was the first club that you hit today as well, so you can't really bring it down to you warming up. We got you a chance to hit a few things before we started this video, so it wasn't really to do with the fact you were warming up. Mm -hmm. For some reason, you, you swung that club almost five miles an hour faster, but you didn't quite see you know, it going maybe as far as, far as it possibly could. Mm -hmm. But I think that what it comes down to is it was, you know, it was maybe a little bit more forgiving overall, mm -hmm. the fact that it was a tighter circle that white circle showed forgiveness. Uh, if we compare the seven irons, what's interesting now, you know, pretty much the exact same club speed. So right at 80.6 and 80.8. So that way we can kind of notice they're closer together based on the ball speed and, and smash back numbers, very, very similar. Mm -hmm. um, if we look at the HP Turbo 4 hybrid and the Cobra T-Rail 4 hybrid, you notice about one you know, maybe one mile an hour difference between the two yeah. of them. Um, ball speed was almost identical. almost identical. So what we got to look here and see, you know, why was that, you know, HP Turbo going so much further? Um, it's because it was actually flying a little bit lower, mm -hmm. um, but you were leaving the club face a little bit open with that T-rail. So mm -hmm. notice how it's positioned out to the right. Mm -hmm. When you leave that face op a little more open, it's going to fly a little higher. It's going to spin a little bit more right. and pretty much not go quite as far. Right. So a little of that is to do with, you know, technique. But I think the looks, you know, you come back to the look of it. You maybe didn't quite like the look of it, but you got a 
you got to give it, you know, a thumbs up for how consistent it was. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. 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 No question. Yeah. So I, you know, in comparison, it looks like across the board that HP Turbo maybe just went a little bit further with the pitching wedge. Maybe just a touch for a little more consistent with the 7 iron. And then the hybrid was, you know, pretty consistently going yeah. about 10 yards further. I did, I mean, I did like the results of it. Yeah, so the results. So if you take a look in comparison, you know, you, like you said, you got to decide, hey, you know, maybe I didn't quite like the look of it, but the numbers are kind of, mm -hmm. you know, maybe presenting a little more of a challenge for me to make the decision between the two clubs. Yep. Yeah. Yep. No, I, I mean, right now, I would definitely, if I was comparing the two, yeah, let's let's wrap up the uh, the Cleveland set and go. Yeah, I I would I would agree. The only one thing I would want to point out is the height difference between the four hybrid and and the Cobra T rail. Why why people may consider going with the T rail option. Mm -hmm. you now, yeah, the face was a little more open, but it was flying about fifteen feet higher. You know, if you look at your seven irons that were go, going about eighty feet in the air. We look here, the T-Rail was also going 80 feet plus feet in the air with the, with the full hybrid. The HP Turbo mm -hmm. is flying a little bit lower. So if we switch this now to carry distance, you'll notice there's maybe not quite as much separation between the two of them. So that's one thing to kind of con consider, you know, with that um, HP Turbo may come into the green just a little bit flatter mm -hmm. landing angle, may not stop wide as fast. Right. Well, but I wouldn't but expect was, the same performance out of, a, say, a four hybrid as I would say maybe a seven. Yeah, you know, but I'm the reason for a little yeah. tighter. So you definitely would want it to be a little tighter. The reason why we transition to hybrids is to keep that, you know, height up in the air as opposed yeah. to playing a, a four iron that would fly a lot lower. So we got the chance to test both these two clubs, the uh, Cleveland HP Turbo and the Cobra T Rail. Mm -hmm. What did you think of both clubs? Did one maybe? look or feel maybe a little bit better overall or, you know what do you think what, do you, what do you, how would you compare them uh, it was an interesting uh, way to compare two similar but different types of clubs the feel and the sound of the cleveland club i really preferred the best but as far as the looks of the club i did prefer the the, the cobra more traditional look to the shape so steve you work in the store as a sales associate you know you know what maybe clubs type of you know player would you recommend to maybe play these clubs and put put in their hands yeah uh, I see a lot of folks who come in that have ball speeds that are say under 100 miles an hour off of a seven iron and that's where these clubs are ideal it has nothing to do with age or gender it really has everything to do with ball speed so the person who when we take them through the process we find that the ball speed like I say is uh, say under 100 miles an hour this is an ideal candidate. Ideal candidate. I know both the uh, T-Rail and the HP Turbo options are available in both women's and men's options, and also senior shaft, graphite shaft, all the way up to a, a stiff flex shaft with, a, with steel yep. shaft. So yep. covers a wide range of you know, pretty much anyone that can come in the store looking to pick up a little bit more ball speed, but want to have a club that's still relatively forgiving. Very forgiving, yep. yep.